what I really want to do today is, you know, give anyone that's interested um, some actionable items that, you know, or maybe you could call it recommendations that can immediately be implemented into your, your everyday work. And I, I believe that it will very quickly make some short term and then some long term positive change. So, um, you know, there's so many books out there and and talks about how to manage and how to sell and how to generate revenue. And when I was put into a leadership position a few years back, um, you kind of think to yourself, where do I start and, and how do how do I do this? Right. Because a lot of times strong sellers move into management and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a strong manager. So um, I think that the best thing to do is really just simplify it, focus on one or two things for the most impact. and. Today, I, I don't plan on telling you what I do in my day to day because I think that that will bore you to tears. Um, and I also believe in all honesty that there's a lot of different methodologies and styles out there that work to get you to that same end result. The sales 101 basics will will really always be that the foundation, the core, and, and you don't need to tell me what the, you don't need me to tell you what those are. So I think the best use of my time and the best use of everyone's time here is to share one of the key tenets um, that will always be relevant. So as the times are changing um, in different environments, as we've switched from you know, in-person to virtual and back with different generations that are coming into the workforce today. So I think you know, as we have, it, and so this can be applied in, in sales and in life and in sports, wherever it is that you want to apply it. I assume that everyone on this call is looking to apply it to sales. So. I'll start with, you know, as a sales leader, if you can focus on or, or channel what it is I'm about to discuss, I think that you will really see um, your team grow as, as sellers and individuals. So first and most important thing is, is the mindset. So how do we put enough focus on, on both our own and our seller's mental ability? You know, wellness is, is such a hot topic these days, but I think we really need to understand what it means and the importance of it and how it's going to be connected to our success. And then second piece of that is really just the healthy competition. Um, how do we use that? You know, it's obviously very mental competition when it comes to the workforce um, and how do we not abuse it? So first and foremost, the mindset. Um, I just want to start by drawing the, the obvious connection here to our physical ability. So anyone that you would talk to um, has a pretty good grasp on physical ability, physical fitness, physical training. You know, if you want to run a marathon, you're going to need to train for six plus months and run several hours each week. And I'm, I'm not sure that there's anyone out there that really would disagree with that. Um, you know, it's you just factual, it's science. And to be able to achieve a physical goal, you need to train for that goal and, and push yourself out of your comfort zone. And the comfort zone is what varies from person to person. And that's the piece I want everyone to remember. Um, so, you know, we understand what the physical ability is. But do we understand the mental ability, right? Because we're managing a team not to be physically fit, but to be mentally fit. Um, and how do we measure it? And how do we recognize it when we're recruiting, which is obviously very, very crucial. How do we train it? Um, these are the types of questions that we as leaders should be asking ourselves every single day. Um, because ultimately, I think that we can train them in, in sales skills. Uh, we can, you know, we can give them the tactics to be successful. I do believe that. I think we can also help our sellers learn our products. But can you teach them to train their mind? Can you coach them to train their mind? And how do you encourage the mindfulness practice? So the best way to, to start this um, and start incorporating it into your management style is with a few basic questions. So do you understand what motivates your sellers? You know, do you, do you understand their intentions? Can you tell... When their work is affected, um, you know, when they are not mentally there. So I think this is the kind of stuff that, you know, is obviously a million dollar question is how, how do we help our sellers at the end of the day? Um, so my takeaway for today is for, for every sales manager out there to sit down with, with your sales team and sit down first, I guess, by yourself and, and look back for trends and look for patterns of how your sellers have reacted in, in certain situations. When they lose a deal, do they recover right away? And do they learn from it? Or do, do they have that whole week where it kind of affects them? And then sit down with the sellers and understand what their motivations are and both personally and professionally, 
you know, why are they doing this job? Yes, they need a job, but why this job? Why this company? What's driving them? What's exciting them? Um, I think that if, if you need to ask the question, it does not mean that you're a bad manager. I actually think the opposite. If you don't ask the question and you don't understand, um, you're not really doing your job right. So this then, and kind of the, the moral of all of this is, once you understand that, it allows you to push them um, out of that comfort zone. And it's not your comfort zone. It's not the collective team's comfort zone. You know, it's theirs. Um, and, and this is how you're going to get the most out of them. You know, I recently, I, my boss gave me a book called The, the Mindful Athlete. And, and what they say in it, there's a line that says, mindfulness practice is like watering your garden. It's the only way to make it grow. So once you have that understanding, uh, the next challenge is, to then implement that healthy competition that I, I mentioned earlier. And, and I think the way that it's most commonly used today, uh, it's going to be on a monthly basis, a manager says, okay, who is going to have the most activity or who is going to hit their revenue target? And of course that can be effective, um, but not if you're overusing it and you're using the same competition every single time. You know, if you think about, if you're running that competition, there's the same three sellers that are winning every single month, what happens to the other seven sellers? So I'll, I'll need to wrap this up soon, but my recommendation to, to anyone on the call um, is to start creating that competition with the individual themselves, because now that you have the understanding of their comfort zone, you can challenge them to go outside of it, um, and that's what's going to lead to the higher performance. So it may be a different challenge for every individual on your team that makes them tick and which really pushes them, but that's the beauty of understanding it, and I think that's what really makes a strong manager is being able to adapt and shift according to who you're managing. Uh, and I'll just leave you with, you know, if you're able to find that right balance, quality and intensity, that's where you're going to have the most success at the end of the day.